Okay, so on the table, I've got the OS FF320 Pegasus engine in. I'm going to begin the disassembly of this engine. Um, I think I've got everything I need so I can actually get at least the heads off and you know, some of the common parts. Uh, one of the things I always like to do when doing an engine of this complexity or a twin is I'll get uh, Tupperware containers and these are brand new and these are all labeled one, two, three, four for our each of our cylinders so that I can keep these components the same and then I'll have one or two of these unlabeled where I can keep general uh, common or centrally located pieces. Let me uh, zoom in here and I've already removed the carb so I think the next order of business here is get this intake the intake manifolds off so let's see here this is number one so I'm going to just start by loosening up these intake screws Am I even getting on this one? Yeah. See, the thing with these nuts on these intake screws and the exhaust is that the flats on it are really thin. And even though this is a Sato wrench, and it's pretty thin, it's almost just not quite thin enough. But, you know, they have supplied wrenches with these that came with this engine for this purpose. But they're so thin then that they get hard to use because they don't really give you the grip you need. And then being thin also it makes it kind of tough once you get it broke loose to get your fingers on there and just finish it. Okay, each of those lock nuts is back. Now this is cylinder one here. So I can just pull this out like this and just hopefully pull it straight out. Goes in one, this is two, two, three, and four. Fold itself off. I want to make sure you get full engagement in these, and if any of these screws have garbage in them, definitely want to get it out. Oops. Full engagement, remember, full engagement before cracking them loose. You don't want to strip out any heads. That turns a good day into a bad one real quick. Well, this engine has probably never been disassembled before because these screws are exceptionally tight. Now I have not heated this engine up at all. I could do that, but and if I need to I will but we'll take that one step at a time. Oh, this, my hands are really sweaty or oily or something here. Common bin. And there's our intake manifold. Now did not pull these rubber things off. I can do that at a later time. I'm just looking to get to the disassembly at this point. Now, I guess I could zoom this in a little bit more if it's of interest. Okay, next, I got the intake manifold off. Next, So you might see that there's some white stuff on this prop nut. What that is, is Teflon tape. 
because the 28 prop I was running on this, uh, I don't know if I ran it on some other engine that had a little bit larger prop hub holder or what, but the hole, Woodruff key, common, but the hole was a little bit larger in that prop, so what I did was I just wrapped the prop nut with Teflon tape so it would fill that gap so I, my prop would still be centered. Here's what our front bearing looks like. I'm not going to remove any more of this stuff here yet. I think I want to go on to... So, thinking as I go, I've only done one of these engines one time before and I'm trying to remember if there was anything I could have done differently. I think the first time I took the head, top of the head off, but this time I think just for the hell of it, I want to try just taking these four screws out and pull this whole head sleeve assembly out first and then put these aside individually and do those individually and that, that way I can at least make sure I get the pistons off and the connecting rods. So to access these screws, I've got a hex key that has been cut down. It has been modified from doing this kind of stuff before with Sato engines and these. And you really need it to be cut down so that you can get in here because you need this L bin like this to break loose the fastener. But I've already got a bunch of sweat dripping in my eyes because it's hotter than, or not hot, but humid out here. Not the same working in the garage as opposed to an air conditioned room. Okay, that one's broke free. I don't know if you heard that little snap or not, but I've mentioned that in many videos before that that's the sign of an engine that's never been opened before. This is cylinder number one. Good thing I've got the manual so I can keep referencing that because my marker is wearing off. Okay, so in theory, this should be ready to come right off. There it is. A little bit of carbon build up in there. We'll put cylinder head number one in here. Pull off. I'm going to try and keep all of this stuff kind of like it is for now and go through the individual pieces later on. Now here's probably where I made the mistake of uh, taking that hub off. this. Now the piston is going to have to come off. Oh, it feels good now. Our piston ring rotates. The piston is going to have to come off before I can get under those screws. So it doesn't feel like this is just really willing to come right off. So I'm probably going to have to put some oil on here and heat this. And possibly drive that out or clean it with a, some LA is totally awesome cleaner because it looks like there's quite a bit of grunge on here. So I'm going to turn the camera off and deal with getting this cleaned up and off of here. <laughs> 